Hi everyone, and thanks for looking at Cinemas Lost Forever. Now don't forget to like and subscribe because that helps an awful lot. In this video, we're looking at the Ritz Cinema in Lincoln, which opened at number 143 to 147, the High Street in Lincoln, on the 22nd of February 1937. It was built for the Siegelman family company, Central Pictures Lincoln Limited, and the architect was Leslie C. Norton. The opening film was Clark Gable and Jeanette MacDonald in San Francisco. Seating was provided for 1,240 in the stalls and 510 in the circle, a total of 1,750 seats. The projectors were Kaplan, supplied by Jack Rowe. Strong Electric supplied the arcs and some more auxiliary equipment. The sound was Western Electric 3ASM, but soon changed to the Western Electric Mirophonic system. Stairs in the main foyer led to the circle foyer and the cafe. The auditorium colours were beige and gold. Seating was designed and supplied by Pathé Equipment. Now at the screen end, provision was made for an organ to be fitted at a later date, and in the meantime, special Western Electric organ reproduction equipment was installed. The organ lift was from J.W. Furs Limited. In 1941, the Ritz cinema suffered minor damage from nearby German bombing, but I couldn't find any photos to show you of that. In 1942, a Compton 3 manual 8 ranks organ was finally installed, which was originally installed in the Cameo Cinema, Charing Cross Road in London. In February 1954, the Ritz became the first cinema in Lincoln to have Cinemascope, and the first film was indeed Richard Burton in the robe. Now the Ritz was taken over by the Rank organisation on the 2nd of January 1956 and was renamed Odeon on the 20th of August in the same year. The only staff name I've got for this period is Ray Harrison, manager around 1980. The Odeon was closed though on the 17th of October 1981 and the building remained closed and empty for three years. In 1984 the Ritz was taken over by independent exhibitor Barry Stead. Barry and his wife Brenda bought the Odeon and vowed to operate it to its ultimate potential. He reinstated the original name and with plans to make it a stage venue too called it the Ritz Theatre. Now Barry at this time was the director of the Theatre Royal in Nottingham. He quickly set about preparing it and the Ritz duly opened on the 15th of February 1985 with Walt Disney's 101 Dalmatians which sold out. Now on the 10th of April the same year it was closed for two weeks for improvements to the stage area to allow live shows. The problem was the stage was only 12 feet deep, there was no fly system, minimal backstage area and no get-in access, meaning that all set and equipment would need to be able to fit through normal sized doors. So Stead set about making improvements which included the construction of a four stage which increased the total depth of the stage to 28 feet. And as part of these renovations, five dressing rooms were also added to the improved backstage area. Under the ownership of Barry and Brenda Stead, both the cinema and the live shows thrived. The likes of David Essex, Billy Connolly, The Hollies, Rod Hull and Emu, Cannon and Ball and others filled the Ritz stage, including from the USA, Bobby V. Now we think one of the projectionists at this time was Eric, surname unknown. No Kiora references please. Another projectionist there at that time was Andrew Nesbitt. Just two years later in 1987, Barry Stead announced that he was looking at possibly tripling the cinema, thus ending live shows altogether. This was really because the main competition in the town, the Cannon, was set to close and the Ritz would be the only cinema left. Roy Todds was manager of the Ritz at this time. 
1991, though, the cinema was completely redecorated, including auditorium, stalls and circle, foyer, toilets and dressing rooms. The Ritz had the largest screen outside of London in 1991, and it was by then the only cinema in Lincoln, and one screen was fast becoming not enough. The Ritz being tripled was inevitable. The last live show, the East of England Orchestra, was on Friday the 6th of January 1995, and then conversion to a triple cinema began. Films continued to be shown while the conversion took place, and it was Lincoln's first multi-screen cinema. Now, screens 2 and 3, with 300 seats each, opened on Friday the 7th of April 1995, with Dumb and Dumber in screen 2, and the re-release again of Walt Disney's 101 Dalmatians, coupled with Shallow Grave in the Evenings, in Screen 3, ready for the Easter holidays. Screen 1, in the former circle, seating 485, opened Friday the 28th of April 1995, with Legends of the Fall. In that November, the cinema was bedecked with fabulous new neon lighting running the length of the building, thus restoring the exterior lighting to its original 1930s plan, which was switched off at the outbreak of World War II as the neon could be seen by German bombers crossing the North Sea. Each neon strip was placed as close to the original position it had once enjoyed 55 years before. Jim Davidson performed the official switch-on at 7pm on the 15th of November. That switch on completed the major conversion of the Ritz into a super three screen cinema. But sadly, the Ritz continued for only another four years and it closed after the final performance of Tomorrow Never Dies, Spice World the Movie, and The Borrowers on Thursday, the 8th of January 1998. Andrew Nesbitt was the final manager at the Ritz Lincoln and he started working there in 1991, before later becoming the manager. Now, he still works for Barry Stead and his wife Brenda at their cinema in Scarborough. But that's not the end of the story of the Ritz. Later in 1998, the Ritz building was acquired by J.D. Weatherspoon. The pub chain set about converting the premises for their purposes, using the foyer and stores, but leaving the former circle almost derelict. In 2013, J.D. Weatherspoon agreed to lease the now disused circle for it to be refitted for cinema use again. Pete Genders was to be chief executive and oversaw the renovation. The new 480-seat venue became an art house cinema and community hub, but sadly that closed unexpectedly in 2017, apparently after the short lease had expired. The Ritz is included on the local list of buildings of architectural significance and is defined as a landmark corner building within conservation area number six. Now if you're wondering about the projectors in the Ritz and what happened to them, well we know where two of them went. Mark Earl from the Lowen Cinema in Maplethorpe, just to the east of Lincoln and sitting right on the coast, almost on the beach. He contacted us to say that they now have the Victoria 8s, the Westrex Tower and a smaller screen frame from the Ritz. This all happened in 1998, of course, upon closure of the Ritz, and at first both Vic 8s were working together with changeovers. But when a second screen was added to the Lowen, one Vic 8 was placed in each screen. The tower from the Ritz fed one and a new platter fed the other. And we wish Mark and the team at the Lowen in Maplethorpe every success. Well, that's about it for this one. I really hope that you liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, particularly subscribe because that helps a lot. Next up is the Theatre Deluxe in Norwich. 
Till then, be good to each other and see you soon. Ta-da!